Dave. Neville. Oh, you haven't arranged to meet Neville Thwaite. Well, not exactly, but I said if he was on his own, uh, we'd be in here. He's always on his own, David, except when he's with us. I know. I feel sorry for him. Well, feel sorry for me for a change. I can't stand him. What have you got against him? He's weird. He's not weird. He's just lonely. He's lonely because he's weird. He's lonely because he came here on a singles holiday and found the rest of the party booked in at the Alhambra. And why, David? Because they knew something. It was a booking error. And until he's sorted out, I think we should be nice to him. After all, he came here to make friends. David, there are 50 million people in Great Britain. Why does he want to come here to make friends? Because he's weird. No, he's not. Well, he's only been here two days and he's already set fire to his bedroom and he doesn't even smoke. <laughs> It was an accident. There was a fault on his electric blanket. There you see. He's brought an electric blanket with him <laughs> to Spain. I mean, that's really weird. I wish you'd stop saying that. Well, I don't think he's altogether there. Of course he is. He's just very reserved, that's all. He was an only child. An only child? Oh, I didn't realise that, David. I thought he'd been assembled from a kit. <laughs> That's very cruel, Amy, saying all that about somebody who's all alone in the world. What happened to his parents? They emigrated. Oh. Was that because they saw him? <laughs> they wanted to start a new life. I bet they didn't leave a forwarding address. <laughs> there you go again. Why do you have to be so rude to a total stranger? He needs kindness and understanding. It, I find it difficult enough to be kind and understanding to people I love. I've got nothing left over for total strangers. He's just painfully shy, that's all. He's not shy. He's got a hide like a rhino. He never smiles, he never speaks, he just hovers. And he never buys a drink and you never complain. I mean, what do you see in him, Dave? I've told you I just feel sorry for him. Hello. Oh, evening, Linda. Hello, Robert. Robert. <laughs> What's the matter with Robert? Well, he's trying to avoid Neville Thwaite. Why, Robert? He gives me the creeps. <laughs> what makes you say that? Well, you know, he set fire to his bedroom, don't you? It was an accident. A man's lying in bed suddenly bursts into flames, and you call that an accident? Well, what would you call it? Spontaneous combustion. <laughs> There's something in his metabolism. He obviously has this capacity for starting fires. Well, I don't want to be around when it happens. Mm, something else. What's that, Robert? He's weird. There you are. Well, I don't agree. You just don't understand him. I know he seems morose. But that's because he lacks confidence. He thinks people don't like him. He's right. <laughs> well, I like him because I understand him. I used to be like that, you know, when I was a girl. All shy and tongue-tied. I thought people didn't like me, that I was unattractive. I know that's hard to believe. No, I believe you, Linda. <laughs> How did you get over that? I think what Linda's trying to say is that we should all well try and bring him out of his shell. Why? I mean, perhaps he likes being in his shell. I don't see why we should spend our holiday trying to cheer him up. <laughs> and anyway, he gets right up my nose. <laughs> oh, hello, Neville. Amy, it's, uh, it's Neville. Yes. Hello, Neville. Is, is there a chair for Neville? No. <laughs> Get yourself a chair, Neville. Look, there's, there's one over there. I think someone's sitting in here. No, no, that must be a trick of the light, Neville. You have my assurance there's nobody sitting in that chair. There was. Well, and you think they might come back? Could do. <laughs> well, look, get that one over there. Now, come on, let's make room for Neville. Amy, you move up one. There you are. This is your can. Now, Linda, you come over here next to Amy because you'll enjoy that. I'll bring the chair. Don't worry about Christmas. it. There we are. Just sit there. That's perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Neville. That's lovely. Now, you move in next to Robert. Tell us when you finish. Sure. That's perfect. Lovely. I think I'll finish my drink at the bar. Well, did you have a nice afternoon, Neville? No, I was on my own. Oh, dear. 
couldn't find you anywhere. No, I don't know how we missed you. I mean, I kept saying, where's Neville? I wonder what's happened to Neville. I fell in the pool. <laughs> how awful. Were you pushed? But can, can you swim, Neville? No. <gasps> you might have drowned. No, I had me rubber ring. <laughs> well, we can't have that, Neville. We can't have you spending your holiday in a rubber ring. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to teach you to swim. Would you like that? Wouldn't mind. I'm sure it won't take long. No, we'll just push you in the deep end. <laughs> you see, people are just like puppies. They come straight back up to the surface and they start swimming away. Suppose I don't. Well, it'll prove you've got no aptitude for it. <laughs> now, what about this evening, Neville? I thought we could all go to the El Dorado. Oh, yes, David, I hear that's fantastic. Genuine flamenco. Oh, they say it has a wonderful ambiance. Oh, well, I'll get my coat. Oh, no, no. Now, wait a minute. I don't think Neville's very excited about this. How can you tell? <laughs> Doesn't it appeal to you, Neville? No. All right, never mind. We'll see you in the morning, Neville. Well, no. Where would you like to go, Neville? Street market. Oh, the street market. Now, that's a very good idea. But we've been to the street market, David. Oh, well, Neville hasn't, and I don't mind going again. It's very colourful. I'm sure Robert wouldn't mind going again. Why do you want to go to the street market, Neville? I want my picture taken with a monkey. <laughs> what? Uh, Neville wants to have his picture taken with a monkey. Is that wise? I promised them that word. Oh, sounds fun. Well, I don't agree. I think it's very wrong to make animals do unnatural things that they don't want to do. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to have an early night. Oh, dear. What a pity. <laughs> do you realise something, Linda? What? This is the first time we've been alone since we arrived. I know. You're very clever, David. <laughs> yeah, anyway, Amy couldn't stand Neville. Mm, the same with Robert. That's why he retreated to the bar. <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to see a great deal of Neville Thwaite. Mm. Do you think he's all right? Oh, yes. Strange about the monkey. Was it some sort of fit? I don't know. <laughs> Apparently, it had never done it before. Poor Neville. <laughs> I didn't realise there was so much blood in the human ear. <laughs> Where did you leave him? In the all-night chemist. <laughs> oh, he'll be fine once it stopped bleeding. I told him to meet us back here. So we really are alone? Yeah. Oh, David. Oh. David? Yes? Was that you? <laughs> what? That? No. You're up bright and early. Neville. I couldn't sleep. How's the ear? Throbbing. I think you could take them to court for that, you know. Was there any mention of compensation? No. They promised to take me picture free of charge once I've got the bandage on. Oh, well, that's uh, something, I suppose. Now, look, I'm sorry about last night leaving you like that, only Linda was feeling faint. I think it was the sight of all that uh, blood. Is that why you were holding her? When? When you were on the terrace. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, it's amazing, you know, for somebody so slim and delicate. Once she fainted, she became a dead weight. <laughs> you don't believe me, do you? You think we're having an affair? No. Are you? What? <laughs> having an affair? Certainly not. And don't look so shocked, Neville. I'm not shocked. This isn't just a cheap little affair, you know, Neville. You don't understand. Like being struck by lightning. I've been struck by lightning. <laughs> Have you? Yeah, it doesn't half make your head ache. <laughs> no, what I mean is that Linda and I have been overcome by the storm clouds of passion. The storm clouds of passion? Yeah, but we're fighting it. I've told Linda that I can't go on. I can't stand the lies and deception and innocent people getting hurt. That's why I need you. Me? What do you want me to do? To arrange for me to see Linda. I thought you were fighting it. I am, but, uh, but it takes time. Well, you saw the state she was in. I can't be cruel. There's too much cruelty in this world, Neville. Yes. 
Now, I want you to go to Linda's room, 206, and ask her to meet me at 11 o'clock in the tennis hut. Don't let Robert know. If he's there, say that he's Linda's taking you for a swimming lesson. I suppose he wants to come. He won't. <laughs> he can't stand you. <laughs> right. And then I want you to come to my room, 510, and ask Amy and me to go for a walk round the gardens. Make a point of asking Amy. But suppose she wants to come. She won't. She can't stand you either. <laughs> Going down, darling. No, I'm waiting for Neville. Neville? He's not coming here. Yes, he's calling for me. I'm teaching him to swim. Why? I don't know why you bother with him. Well, I feel sorry for him. He's had a hard life. Did you know he was once struck by lightning? <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. It certainly looks as if he's been struck by something. <laughs> he looks half dazed most of the time. On the contrary, he can be a very stimulating companion. Yes, did you find him stimulating last night? Last night? And you were rather late, darling. It was almost two o'clock. Well, there was an accident. The monkey bit his ear. <laughs> really? <laughs> bit his ear? Did it bleed much? Copiously. Ah, well, that'd be the lobe. Yes, it must have been the lobe. Oh, I wish I'd been there. Rocks! Hell! It's a ridiculous idea. Having his picture taken with a monkey, how are they going to tell them apart? Robert, now he's here. Hello, Neville. <laughs> How are you feeling? Much better, thank you. And how is the monkey? What? It could have been serious, Robert. David says there may be a case for compensation. Only if it dies. <laughs> <laughs> is something the matter, Neville? I've got a message. <laughs> You're not a Jehovah's Witness. No, no. It's from David. Shh, shh, Robert, we must be careful. He's suspicious about last night. Remember, you never left my side. We walked back along the cliff path, stopped at the beach cafe for a sangria, arrived back in the hotel about 12, then had coffee in the lounge until 2. We talked about ecology. Ecology? Diminishing hedgerows and pesticides. Neville. I need someone I can trust. A friend. Most men want more than my friendship, Neville. They want to trap me like a butterfly, spread my wings and pin me down. <laughs> but I want to fly. Do you understand that? Um, yes. I thought so. You're so dependable. Now, what was the message? Message? You said there was a message. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm still not getting it. Um, how many words? <laughs> that mirror. 
Uh, th there was a mark on it. <laughs> Leave that to the maid, would you? Where's Linda? She's gone. I can see that. What happened last night, Neville? Uh, she never left my side. Walked back along the cliff pass, stopped at the beach cafe for the sandwich. <laughs> Got back to the hotel around 12, had coffee in the lounge and talked about ecology. <coughs> ecology? Diminishing hedgerows and pesticides. <laughs> You're on a singles holiday, aren't you, Neville? Uh, yes. Yes. Well, Linda isn't single, she's married. And I thought I'd better remind you of that, because if you would forget, I may get very angry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. <laughs> Don't let me keep you. <laughs> Do you want to go down to the pool, David, or would you rather rest here? No, I, no, I don't want to rest. Oh, I thought you might be tired. You were very late in last night. Was I? It was nearly two o'clock, David. Oh, I see. Now we're going to get the interrogation. Amy, why are you so suspicious? It may surprise you to know that there was an accident last night. The monkey bit Neville's ear. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me in the least, David. The monkey's a very intelligent animal. <laughs> what have you got against him? He's just a mild, inoffensive little man. So was Cripping. <laughs> he could show a little sympathy. I bet Robert didn't show much sympathy. What did he say when it happened? Uh, nothing. He, he wasn't there. Oh. It was just you and Linda? And Neville. He was there the whole time, like a limpet. <laughs> couldn't get rid of him. <laughs> Why did you want to get rid of Neville? I thought you liked him. I didn't say I wanted to get rid of Neville, but if I had wanted to get rid of Neville, I couldn't. That'll be Neville. Oh. <laughs> did you see, Linda? It's all arranged. Good. Now, remember, I never left your side all evening. Amy, she can be very suspicious. Can she? Ever been stopped late at night and questioned by the police? It could be like that. <laughs> Hello, Neville. Did you have a nice evening, apart from the monkey? He never left my side. Who did <laughs> uh, David. What made you say that? Pardon? <laughs> what time did you leave? Back along the cliff path. Oh. <laughs> Is that much Stopped shorter? at the beach cafe. It's very nice there, isn't it? Did you have sangria? Sangria. <laughs> and you must have left there, what? At 12. <laughs> David didn't get back until... Two! We... Coffee in the lounge. <laughs> For two hours? You must have had a great deal to talk Ecology? about. Ecology? Ecology. <laughs> Vanishing pesticides and the use of hedgerows. <laughs> Was that woman still there? Woman? In the lounge. I was there earlier. She was very drunk. Did you see her? No. Yes. <laughs> Oh, did you see Neville? Behind the chair. <laughs> Amy, Neville suggested a stroll around the gardens. Uh, yes. Uh, would, would you like a stroll around the gardens? I'd love a stroll around the gardens. Not uh, tired of the gardens? Oh, no. We could talk about ecology. I'll just get me sunglasses. <laughs> Quick, get back to Linda and tell her I can't make it. Right. I think I handled that pretty well, David. Yes, <laughs> now. Neville. Um, Neville. I don't know how to say this, but when David arranged this meeting, I don't think he meant the three of us. You don't mind me saying that. No. You didn't want me to see him alone, did you? You didn't think I'd have the strength. But I have. You have given me that strength, Neville. And I will see him alone. You can't. Why not? He's not coming. <laughs> then what are we doing here? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure you're all right, Robert. You're limping rather badly. Uh, just the recurrence of an old injury, darling. <coughs> Where were you today, Linda? Well, I spent most of the day with Neville. Neville, yes. You don't think you're seeing just a little bit too much of Neville? 
Why? He's perfectly harmless. He is not harmless. He's a walking accident looking for somewhere to happen. <laughs> Don't say that, Robert. I've asked him up for a drink. What? You haven't. If you think he's... Hello? <laughs> Hello, Neville. I'm sorry, I, I can't stay. Oh, can't you? Pity. Only I've got this uh, card game in my room. Oh, I didn't know you played cards, Neville. Oh, yes. I play cards, all right. <laughs> what are you playing? What? What are you playing? Oh, I don't know. Um, anything that takes our fancy. <laughs> Only, uh, we've got this uh, card school. <laughs> so, um, I won't be seeing you this evening. Well, I must go. I've got to uh, arrange the crisps. <laughs> Look, he's forgotten his key. Oh, oh well, I'll take it to him, Robert. He's so absent-minded. <laughs> well, I'd uh, I better get off. Where are you going? Neville's room. Why? He's arranged a card school. <laughs> Neville has? Yes. Poker. Probably a long session, so, so don't wait up. Neville's playing poker. Yes, high stakes, so uh, wish me luck. Well, I think I'll come with you. What? <laughs> you can't play cards. Well, I know, but I've never seen Neville's wallet. I always <laughs> thought he kept it in the hotel safe. Amy, you can't play poker. Yes, I can, David. Well, all right, what's a full house? I know what a full house Well, go on, is. describe it to me. All right. A full house is when you've got two hearts and, say... Three black knobbly ones. <laughs> Three black knobbly ones? You can't even remember the suits. I'll manage. I don't think there'll be enough room at the table. Well, then I'll watch. <coughs> You'll make me nervous. Yes, I can see that, David. <laughs> We're not there yet, and you've already got a run in flush. <laughs> 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 Half a four, my friend. Neville, there's been a change of plans. What are you doing with that monkey? I'm having me photograph taken this at the hood. Well, look, forget that. Amy's suspicious. She's going to your room. You've got to get back there and really organise a card school. What? But I'll try and delay Amy and get rid of that monkey. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with that monkey? He wouldn't let me go. I think he likes me. Where's David? He sent me to warn you. Amy's coming. <laughs> Oh, no, she mustn't find me here. She'll guess everything. Um, what are we going to do? I don't know about you. I've got to organise a card game. Oh, oh, just check the corridor, quickly. <laughs> She's coming! <laughs> Neville, put down that monkey. <coughs> Come here. Brace yourself. me a room at the Alhambra. Well, it's cheaper. That's not the reason, is it? I shouldn't have involved you in all this. I took advantage of you. I just wanted to say I'm sorry. That's all right. But I've spoilt your holiday. Spoilt my holiday. I've had to lie to save a marriage. I've been kissed passionately by a married woman. I've been threatened with physical violence by a jealous husband. And I've lost all my money at cards. <laughs> oh, David. It's the best holiday I've ever had. Hey. Where are you going next year? 